So here we have a question which combines a few skills from probability theory. So let's see whether we can identify the important elements in this question. So government wants to encourage small business owners to pay their business taxes in time. That's a notorious problem. HMRC, that's the tax collecting agency in the UK, is undertaking an experiment. So 90% of small business owners just get the usual communication, like possibly um, tax deadline is here and then. 5% of businesses receive a text reminder one month before the deadline. So it's group A. So it's a text reminder. And another 5% receive a phone call one month before the deadline. That's group B. So that is just write these down. So there's somehow there are some probabilities. So probability that um, we have event C, that's sort of the uh, default option is 0 0.9, probability A is 0 0.05, and probability of B is also 0 0.05. So you can see this is some sort of distribution. It's the marginal distribution The marginal distribution that, sorry, that handwriting is not very nice. Marginal distribution, and how shall we call this? Let's say of um, experiment, um, let's call it of E, okay, or experiment, variable experiment. There are three possible outcomes, and these are the distributions, okay. Let T be the end event that a small business does pay tax on time. After a year of research, HMIRC established that the probability of T given C, so that is for this group here, is 50%. So if someone just got the usual communication, then the probability that they pay tax on, on time is 50%. If they receive a text reminder, then the probability of them paying tax in time is 60%. And if they receive a phone call as a reminder, someone calling, hey, do you know that in a month's time your tax is due, then the probability that they pay tax in time is 0.65. Okay, so that experiment seems to do something, um, whether that's a big effect or not. Is the question remember that there will be thousands and thousands of businesses paying tax so a difference of 0.1 or 10 percentage points or five percentage points could mean a lot more money in earlier for uh, the tax agency so that's sort of the information we have now in a small village called Wallington Wallington there are 10 small businesses they all belong to group C what's the probability that all of them pay tax in time so this, let's say, part A of the question, you can think of this as a binomial experiment where the success probability is, we usually label that in binomial experiments as pi, is 0 0.5. That means if you randomly draw someone who has been part of group C, the probability they pay tax is 50%. Now, if you want to calculate for a binomial random variable, the probability that the outcome, if you have 10 experiments, uh, sorry, there are 10 small businesses, so here n would be equal to 10, the probability that all 10 pay tax conditional on all of them, that's a pretty nasty looking line, so let's replace that with a beautiful looking conditional line, conditional on all of them being part of category C. Well, how do we calculate that? So we need to know the uh, formula for the um, uh, binomial, yeah, the binomial formula, and it's basically x factorial, 
divided by n factorial times n minus x factorial and that times pi to the power of to the power of x times 1 minus pi to the power of n minus x. So let's plug our numbers in. x is 10, so 10 factorial divided by n factorial, that's uh, 10 again, then 10 minus 10, so that's 0, then 0 0.5 to the power of 10 times 1 minus pi is again 0 0.5, but n minus x is 0. So what do we get here? We get here, we just get 1. 0 factorial is defined as 1. So we get 1 here in the front and then 0 0.5 to the power of 10 and if you calculate that you get 0 0.00 one more zero nine seven seven okay so it's a pretty small probability a tenth of a percentage point probability so then let's go to b another small village called Romsickle. They're also small 10 businesses. They all belong to group B. What's the probability that all of them pay tax in time? So we don't need to do that in all that much detail. It's almost the same and conditional on group B. And this is now 10 factorial divided by 10 factorial times 0 factorial in our case and now the probability of success is has changed for b it is 0.65 to the power of 10 times 1 minus 0.65 which is 0.35 to the power of 0 and if you calculate that you get 0.01346 so it's still a pretty small probability, but it's more than one percentage point. So it's more than 10 times larger than, um, than the one we calculated before. Okay, but still it's pretty big probability not, that not everyone pays. So that's A and B. Let's move to C and let me use a different color for this. Part C. You're walking with a friend, small business owner in the Peak District. He proudly tells you that he just paid his business tax before the deadline. And now the question, is he more likely to have received a text or a phone call from HMRC? So he just paid his tax before the deadline. That is super important information because we know that event T has happened. So he paid the tax. Okay, so that's very important. Is he more likely to have received a text or phone call from HMRC? So the probabilities we are after here is the probability of B, that's a text, conditional on T, and the probability of A, conditional on T. So how do we calculate these? probability of B conditional on T is equal to the probability of B and T divided by the probability of T. And this one here will be the probability of A and T divided by the probability of T. So, None of these probabilities, neither this joint probability nor that marginal probability of t we have. So let's think about, firstly, about the probability of t. Now, there are three ways how we can get to t. We're either a c person and then given we are a C person, we do pay tax. 
or we are an A person and if we are an A person we pay tax at that probability or we are a B person and if we are a B person we pay tax at this probability. So that means we can construct this probability from the combination of those. Probability of C times the probability of T conditional on C plus the probability of A times the probability of T conditional on A plus the probability of B times the probability of paying tax given I'm in group B in the experiment. Now what are these probabilities here, these three probabilities? They're nothing else but the probability of C and T here plus the probability of A and T plus the probability of B and T. And you'll see that if you know about Bayes' rule. Yeah, Bayes' rule, of course, let me just draw that in uh, in a little... Uh, why do I, do I put that up here? Bayes' rule. With different events, I don't want to use any of these events, so I use X and Y. The probability of X conditional on Y is the same as the joint probability of X and Y divided by the probability of Y. And you can see if you bring that Y over here, then you get that the joint probability is equal to the conditional times the marginal probability of the conditioning event. That's what we have down here. So, I mean, let's calculate these things. Probability of C times probability of T conditional C. Probability of C is 0 0.9 times 0 0.5 plus probability of A is 0 0.05 times probability, the conditional probability of T conditional on A is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.05 times 0.65. So, what we can uh, do is we can just calculate all of these terms. And so what do we get here? Here we get 0.45. Plus, all point. Uh, what do we get? All point o, o three. Plus, and let me just make sure I don't make a mistake here. I should really able to calculate that in your hand but if you do a video it's just too embarrassing if you make a mistake and takes too much time so it's 0 0.000325 sorry oh I have a zero too much here as well so let me write that down here first 0325 and this one up here the second one is just 0.03. And if you sum all of them up together, what we get is 0.5125. So now it turns out we actually have all of the terms which we need. We're getting probability of B and T, so we calculated that here in, in the end, that was this, this bit here. So that's 0 0.0325, 0 0.0325. And we get 0.0325. And we get 
And what we get here, bt is all point, all point, uh, 3, 2, 5, 0.06, so 6, 3, 4. So then here, probability of A conditional on T. Now, A and T, that was what we calculated here, 0 0.003, 0 point, sorry, 03, only one O, divided by, again, 0 0.5125. And that comes out as 0 0.0585.0585. And let's actually also calculate the probability, I'll write that here, probability of C conditional on T. And you can do that in the same way. It's basically, it's this one here. That's the joint probability divided by the probability of T. And what you get if you do that, you get 0 0.878. So these are the joint probabilities. And so now let me I'll give myself a little bit more space. Because I want to remind you of what these initial marginal probabilities were. The probability of B, I'll write these underneath each other, that was 0 0.05. The probability of A, the marginal probability of A was also 0 0.05. And then the probability of C was 0 0.9. So now you can see what actually happened. We have, we knew the marginal probability. And now before you asked your friend, as you had a walk, if you thought about which group of the experiment did he belong to, because you knew he was a small business owner, you would have said, well, I know 90% belong to group C. Perhaps you're part of that experiment in the tax office. 5% were part of group A and 5% part of group B. Why should I, whatever, why should whatever he tells me make me change that sort of opinion or that sort of value, that these probabilities. Well, so now you know that your friend is a taxpayer, pay tax in time. So why does that change these probabilities? Because we know now the probability of C has sort of dropped. The probability of A has increased and the probability of B also has increased and it has increased a little bit more than the probability of B. And why is that so? Well, that's so because of these conditional probabilities. The fact that he paid tax makes it more likely that he came from A or B compared to C because it's more likely that someone who was part of group A and B actually does pay tax. So that's what we've seen here, that information, that one piece of information, your friend is a taxpayer, allowed you to update these marginal probabilities with which we started. And now we have a somewhat more refined view of the probabilities of him coming from group A, B or C. Now, since the vast majority of people, 90% were part of group C, you're not dropping the possibility that he came from part from group C, but it just became less likely and it became more likely that he came from these smaller groups. So that's how we sometimes think of ba the Bayesian formula as a sort of updating formula. Right? The information that your friend paid tax allowed you to update the marginal probabilities.